Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to Dharma Time here on WPSN99.com, the Problem Solving Network. I'm your host, the Dharma Guy, here as always with the Dope Doctor. What's up, man? What's up, what's up? Although, uh, I should say the Dope Doctor, because apparently... <laughs> That's how uh, you've been posting it. Apparently, all these social media posts I've been doing, um, unbeknownst to me, the Doctor was completely capitalized. So, yeah, what was that about? Um, you that hates capital letters. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And, and thanks for not correcting me until like several months later. You know, I forget things. Yeah, appreciate that. Anyways, I digress. Uh, we are today uh, a very special day for Dharma Time. We did it for the Couch Live last week, but now we're doing it for Dharma Time. Uh, we are broadcasting not only live on WPSN99.com, but we're also broadcasting live via the Facebook and Instagram for WPSN99.com. That's right. So we are uh, making that transition away from our personal pages onto the business uh, one, so you can right. watch all of the shows um, as well as the uh, the ones that we're on. So right. um, that doesn't mean you can't like or follow us. I mean, yes. we prefer it, but yes. the show part needs to be. If here. you want to like or follow either one of us, you go on uh, social media. It's at the Dope Doctor and at the Dharma Guy. Right. Um, and then uh, if you want to watch WPSN, it's at WPSN ninety nine. Right. So uh, that that is how you find us. Yep. <clears throat> and let me go ahead and get some uh, sponsorship stuff out of the way. That way I don't forget to do it later because I have a sneaky suspicion today's topic is going to probably go over. Um, so let me go ahead and get this out of the way. We have uh, a Retreat Behavioral Health. Yep. Uh, we have Journey Pier. We have Orange County Drug Free Coalition, which we have a meeting on Thursday, don't forget. Uh, then we have, of course, uh, Now Matters More Foundation, uh, of which he is the founder and the president. Um, <clears throat> you can see more about us at nowmattersmore.org, or you can call 833-NOW-MATTERS. That's 833-NOW-MATTERS. Uh, and we brought a new sponsor on, uh, Sport Subaru South. Yeah. So for those of you who are here local with us, by all means, go down and get all your Subaru needs taken care of. At get Sport. all your vehicle needs taken care of. Well, I mean. I'm assuming you need a Subaru if you need a vehicle. I didn't even... There are no I other mean. vehicles. There's just Subarus. Well, I'm sure they have a used car department just in case. <laughs> yeah, right. You, just in case um, you're a little bit finicky about what you drive. <laughs> but the reason why we're promoting that, other than them being a, a fantastic sponsor of not only the, the show but the foundation, um, starting November 15th all the way through December 31st, they're going to do the Share the Love event. That's awesome. And uh, they're going to be donating $250 per car sold in that time frame. And apparently Subaru as a whole is going to match that. That's right. So $500 per car bought at Sport Subaru South um, That's awesome, will be man. donated to the Adam Moore Foundation. So That's thank you very awesome. much for that. That directly goes to save lives. Absolutely. Directly. Very, very excited about that. That's pretty awesome. Um, <coughs> so uh, any but, other... But yeah, 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 yeah. When you say ahead. Journey Pure and Retreat, you really don't say what they do. I do, actually, usually. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Most shows I do. Not every right. single show. Right. Um, but uh, now that you brought it up, both Retreat, Behavior Health, and Journey Pure... Um, they deal with the the addiction world. They help individuals get off of drugs and alcohol and live a, 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 a sober life, life, man. Yeah. Uh, um, Long term recovery is uh, what we like to call get it. Get your life back, man. Yeah, man. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know, that's what we do. Um, especially the Now Matters More Foundation. That's part of what we do. We help individuals do that through a, a multitude of different ways. All of which you can read about on nowmattersmore.org. dot org. Right. Um, but uh, yes, and, and those are two of the facilities that uh, not only WPSN works with, but the foundation works with as right. well. Right. Very, very good facilities. We've actually done shows from both locations, I believe. Yep. Um, so, anyways, uh, any other housekeeping before we get started on this mega topic? No, man. I'm, I'm ready to get into it other than uh, Skyler. Um, Skyler's barricaded One herself. of your daughters is barricaded behind you yes. just like your wife does. Yes. The, apparently the... So, uh, she can't be seen on YouTube. Which is weird considering the fact... can't be seen on any, you know, Facebook Live or Instagram. Which is interesting considering the fact that she wants that attention, but apparently not on camera. So... I don't know what that's all about. She doesn't want the attention from our audience. Yeah, exactly. Our yeah. audience apparently isn't good enough right. for uh, the likes of her. Right. Shame, Scott. Shame. Um, all right, so. Uh, we don't even see her hand. At least her mom puts up her hand when, when, <laughs> yeah, when we when mention her. Yeah. Skyler, let's see your hand real quick. She would not be even be acknowledged. Skyler, just put your hand straight up. Oh, there, oh there, she there, put there, her face up. There we got a All right. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, uh, that's a good segue, I guess, uh, into today's topic, man. Um, right. So uh, as hopefully you all know, yeah. we had a Father's Day on Sunday. That was our Is that Nash. what that was? That's, that's what I'm told. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, it, w- it was actually really cool. First and foremost, I had a good Father's Day. Did you? Yeah, awesome. Um, for me, I, I think the, the coolest part, if I'm honest wasn't necessarily the gifts and whatnot. Like, I got some shirts and things of that nature, mm-hmm. which were cool. I appreciated them. Right. But if I'm honest, the thing that I really appreciated the most mm-hmm. was how important it seemed to my kids. 
Mm-hmm. Like it was really important to them that I had a good time, or they they right. they really wanted to make sure they got stuff for me and wrapped it. Like it was this whole big thing in the house where right. they were all kind of keeping secrets and they didn't want to tell anything. Like and for me, that, that was probably the coolest part that it that it wasn't Angel making them do it. Right. It was them really kind of getting excited and wanting to do something for Dad, which to me that's probably what meant the most. I yeah, guess that's cool. Was was kind of cool that they're them getting into it. So. Um, what you but, what would would you get? Um, I got uh, I got some some shirts like some tank tops, some shorts. I saw you with your brand new uh, brand new tank top. Yeah, the green one on. Yeah, that one's actually to replace the one that my wife actually ruined. She had, oh. I, I had another green ah, one because ah. she like half my shirts at the house are either got bleach on them or they're shrunk. Oh, so, yeah, man. good times. Oh man, are you sure they shrunk Trinity or just you know I got bigger? Yeah. yeah, who knows? Probably a little bit of both, I guess. <laughs> That's what I always say. I, I always say mic, she shrinks it. <laughs> I think my mic just popped too. By the way, I think so too. Um, but anyways, uh, uh, so uh, so Father's Day, man. Um, you know, it got me to it, it got me thinking. You know, this is a subject that's very near and dear to my heart for for a multitude of reasons. Yours as well, right? Um, you know, from my perspective, Father's Day and just the idea of fathers in general is important to me. A because I didn't really have a good one growing up, right. and B because it's really like a, a a mission of mine in life to be the best one that I can be. Right on. Probably because I know how important it is to not have one because I didn't, um, and I know how I felt growing up. How important up. it is to not have one, or how sad it is to not have one, or Both. how unfortunate it is. To yeah, have whichever, whichever one you want to call it. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess for me, you know, that's why. That's why for me personally, it's so important to me to be to be a good one. Right. It's because I didn't have one. Right. And I know how how it impacted me. You know, uh, at the time, I know how it impacted me. And how I felt, <clears throat> and what skills I did I wasn't given. You know yeah. what tutelage, if you will, I didn't receive. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, but then as I got older, and I started seeing how it was impacting my decision making as I got older, right? And I realized a lot of that stemmed from you know my my early interactions with my father. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, at the time I don't know, but as you get older, you look back like, wow, okay, I can see how that was connected. Yeah. Um, and so all that to me just motivates me to be the best I can be. Um, and then I see uh, I'm also fortunate enough to be surrounded by a lot of fathers that I respect. You know, like a lot of people I know, um, yourself is included, and my other friend uh, oh, Terrence. Thank you. Like, thank you. you know, the a lot of my friends take that role very seriously as well. And so it's kind of like it's cool because it's reinforced through my friends too. You know, like I don't have any friends who are just deadbeat dads. Right. A lot of my friends take it very seriously, so it's like a support system. You know, we all are on the same page, which I think is awesome. You that know, you know of. I mean, I can have a kid. You yeah, know, you floundering can, over there in they, Vegas. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> or, um, or East LA. So, uh, um, but yeah, you, you know. So for me, it's it's a subject that's very near and dear to me, um, right. and it is to you as well. I know. Right. Um, and you and I have a little bit different upbringings, different experiences with fatherhood. Right. Um, as far as on the receiving end of that, mm-hmm. you know, your uh, uh, your father was there. Yeah. Well, he was present. I know he. You said he, he uh, was away a lot for military. military. Uh, yeah, he's a lifer, so um, you know he was always <coughs> gone on on sure. deployment. But uh, when he was home, he was very present. Yeah, very emotionally um, available, man. Yeah, and and mine wasn't. Um, still so is, by the way. My my life is, my dad is still alive and well. As he calls you an idiot. Uh, yeah, well, that's my, uh, that's my name, bro. That's part of the love, Louis though, stupid man. idiot Delgado. Yeah, that's part of the love, that's, man. That's, uh, you know, I'm... And I've met your father. Your father's awesome. And your mom, too, by the way. Listen, Both listen, of them are so cool. In all fairness to my dad, when he calls me that, I am being a stupid idiot. So, <laughs> you know, to me, I think that's what fathers bring that, to the table. Yeah, he, he speaks yeah. truth. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, I can't um, fault him for speaking truth. And before we start getting into all that, I do want to preface, and you and I were made sure that we wanted, wanted to not only give our own uh, interpretation and anecdotal stuff, but... Right. You know, a lot of what we're going to say today is backed up by some science, right? There was, uh, there's a lot of different uh, uh, science publications that I looked at, and, and when we were kind of having a conversation about this show, right? Uh, you know, there's a few of them out there I, I thought were worth mentioning. Um, there was one done by Paul Amato from Penn State. He's the head of the sociology department out there in Penn State. Right. He did a couple uh, different research studies. Uh, the Journal of Economic Psychology did one back in 2004. Uh, PubMed.gov has released several of them. Um, and, and I'm only saying that because um, if you disagree with us or if you get defensive in some of the stuff that we're going to say, it's very easy to dis- dismiss that as, oh, that's just our opinion. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, but it's not just our opinion. I mean, there's actual science to prove that we, what we are saying has right. is, is got some relevance to it. Um, granted, there's always going to be outliers, but you and I are uh, going to focus on the majority here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so... Once again, uh, we're not a show on, we're not a news publication, so obviously feel to do, feel free to do your research and look it up yourself. 
Well, just um, like um, I'm, a, I'm apparently an outlier when it comes to the type of father I had. Number one, I had a Latino father. Two, um, he was uh, gone a lot. Right. And three, he's a command sergeant, major army. <coughs> so people tend to believe one thing about him when in reality, yes, he was all those things. He was right. real strong and tough, but very emotionally available, which is not very common cool. for the yeah. rest of it. So well, it's not common for always an outlier. Yeah. We're always an outlier in my family. Um, so anyways, let me start it off by just saying that, that um, you know, growing up, like my, my, my uh, mentality on this whole subject has kind of evolved as I've gotten older mm-hmm. and as I've got my own kids. Um, so between my own experiences growing up, between, uh, you know, having my own kids now and just seeing in my own home how different scenarios are addressed in our house. Uh, talking to other people I know that are parents and seeing how the difference in the way those things are addressed. The one, the conclusion that I've come up with over the years is um, there's a very real need for both the male and female kind of roles within uh, the rearing of children. No, so you're taking it there. Yeah, I think there's a re- very real need, you know, because obviously we're going to talk majority about fathers in this one because we right. just had a Father's Day. We're both fathers. Right. But I also don't want to undercut the value of of moms as well, the mom, right, the right, mom right. role. But we but, talked about them in May. But so that's such a, but that's such an easy and such a sexy topic. You know, what I mean, like everybody talks about, it. everybody knows the powers of moms. You know, yeah. Um, but the thing I don't think gets enough attention is the power of dads. Actually, nobody argues the power of a mom. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, the woman's role never gets argued. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, but the male role gets yeah, attacked all the time. Well. You know, you got a decisions of a few that seems to just dirty the waters for yeah. everybody else, and yeah. I don't think that's a cool. I don't think that's a fair assessment yeah. of things. If, if I was an alien and I would land on this planet, and I'm not talking about illegal alien, I'm talking about from outside <laughs> another planet alien. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification. But, yeah, I, you have to these days. Yeah. All right, so so if I'm from another planet and I just watch our media and listen to the way we talk about gender roles and all that stuff and mothers and fathers and all that, right? I would truly think that. Um, the, the the male is a huge problem, <laughs> and the yeah. fem- and the female is completely perfect. Yes, that is the vibe that is portrayed um, in the mainstream. Right. Yes. Now, and, and I'm not saying socially we've behaved that way, but if you look at the attention and the comments and the things that are allowed to be said, you would think that the yeah. female is 100 percent perfect. Yes. And all the problems that they experience are because of the male. Yes. That's the vibe that is given. And I obviously disagree with that. Um, I don't think either one is perfect. Just like I don't think either one of us is 100% at fault all the time either. It clearly never been in my household. My mom, my mom's a bad Betty boy. <laughs> Good luck with that. I, uh, uh, but no, I, I think that, that it is often overlooked, though, <clears throat> about the, the power or the impact that a father can have. And, and, and to an extent, I understand the mentality that you have to kind of get into because I was raised by a single right. mom. Right, right. And so my mom... You know, she didn't really have much. She did a damn good job, by the way. I think so. Um, but I mean, had my mom got her w- her wish, she would have had a father in the household. But my dad had other opinions. Um, <laughs> That's a good way to say it. And so I, I think that my mom was forced to kind of, you know, uh, do what she felt she had to do. You know, and and um, I understand that mentality. You know, and if you have no other choice, you, you know, you do what you got to do. Um, but the one thing I did like about my mom, though, was she never portrayed herself as the father. You know, that whole thing where I'm a single mom, but I'm also playing the other role. No, she's always said I'm a mom and I'm being the best mom that I can be. Mm. And there's other things that I have to do that I would prefer a father to do, but he's not here. So I'm going to do them. But she's never tried to portray herself as the dad, you know, which and, I and think that was verbalized. Cool. And that was, that was discussed. Um, she said it before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She said it before. Um, which I think is cool because as a dad, I get irritated sometimes when I see, like on Father's Day, you always have the single mom like I'm playing both roles. I'm, no, you're not. You're not the dad, and vice versa. You know, the dad, you're not the mom either. Like if the mom is gone for whatever reason, um, when it comes to Mother's Day, like that's not your day. You're not the mom. Um, you have to, you know, the things that you're doing is called being a parent. You know, you're you're stepping up to play the roles that the other one isn't right, there. To, right, right, you know, right, but right. that doesn't mean you are that role. Like right. you are not the mom. You are not the father. Like interim CEO kind yeah. of kind of <laughs> yeah. deal. Because um, there's things you know, there's things that that inherently come with that role that you can't um, you can't fake. You know, 
and you, we, you and I were talking before because we know inevitably somebody's going to watch this, and you know I identify as such. A, that's going to happen. People's feelings get hurt about anything, of course. Um, but the way the way I I addressed that was, you know, I've been a man my entire life. You know, I was born a boy and I grew up to be a man. <laughs> and if I if I decide tomorrow that you know it's been a lie my whole life and i'm i really want to be a woman and mm-hmm. i and i start taking estrogen and and i go through sex change or whatever it is and i can live as a woman it doesn't mean that i know what it's like to be a woman from the day you're born like there there's certain mm-hmm. things that come with that role your entire life mm-hmm. that that you don't instantly gain because you make a decision later on in life mm-hmm. you know and, and so the majority of people these days who have who've chosen a different gender be it, you know i don't the word "chose" I use here in the sense of yeah, you're, I, you know, you're using that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. They didn't, they didn't choose how they were born. Don't I get, get too all worried. That. Don't get too worried. But Charity. my point is, you're gonna lose your point. My, yeah, the point I'm trying to make is just because later on in life you were able to to act out right. what you felt you are all along doesn't change the fact that you were viewed and treated as that particular gender growing mm-hmm. up, yeah. and that comes with certain experiences you. and insight. And so, if I chose today to to act out. You know, being a woman, I don't instantly get all the insight that comes with being a woman for almost forty years. Right, right, right. That doesn't happen. No, what you would identify with is is the internal struggle, yes, and yes. stuff like that. Which there is a group of individuals that of can identify with that internal struggle. So that's the group you would identify mostly with. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, so, in that sense, I, I do believe. Uh, I, I just I get tired sometimes as a dad. The two things I get tired of is a, you know. Uh, uh, society doesn't seem to appreciate fatherhood as much as I think they should at times. Right, right. And then the second thing I don't like either, though, and it's kind of contradictory, I guess, in a sense, but I also don't like the fact the... This is going to sound kind of weird. The kind of attention and praise I would get when I would go to, like, my kid's school to do stuff. Mm, I, would get I, all sorts of, I would get all sorts of, like, uh, attention and praise. Like, oh, my God, isn't that great or whatever? Yeah. But like, like it's a rarity. Yeah, like no, dude. Like this is my job. I'm a dad. I'm a parent. Th- that's my role. Uh, what do you mean? Like, you see, don't. That con- is truth, though. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, how many dads were around? But but granted, a lot yeah. of them were working. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm sure a lot of them had great excuses. Of but course. Were Were you one of the minority there at the? Uh, at oh, present? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. When I go to places like when I take my like on Wednesday, I, I'm going to take my daughter to uh, uh, go to the to the doctor right. as a checkup for the concussion she got. Right. 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 I'm gonna. I'll probably be the only father there with their right. kid. It's usually moms with the kids. By the way, a concussion that was not created by you. No, no, yeah, no. Okay. No, it was created with this one back here. Um, but uh, but also because as, as as in counseling, um, uh, one of the one of the things that that would happen was I would also <coughs> praise the dads for being there, not because I was shocked, right. because I wanted them to know you're a good dad. Yeah. Because a lot of times in family counseling, they wouldn't show up either. Right. They'd be like, you go. I don't think yeah. we need counseling. I'm not going to spend money on that. That's <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. He's an idiot. He's acting like an idiot. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's yeah. how the, you know, it's a lot of dads would approach it that way. Sure. So when a father would yeah. take time out of work or come and participate, I would praise him because I would let him know this is right now. Right. This is an important job, just as important as, as uh, yeah. putting food on the table. Well, right and in, in the same sense, you probably praise the mom, too, for taking time to show up, right? I mean... I w- she could have just dropped the kid off and left. I would praise the mom for, for different reasons. Sure. I would praise the mom for listening <coughs> more yeah. than preaching because a lot of them would s- yeah. would want to – they would take what I would say and say, did you hear Did you hear what Louis said? Did you hear what he said? <laughs> yeah. And then they would try to – I said, and I would praise the ones that would sit back and take feedback. Well, my, I guess my point is there's nothing wrong with acknowledging when somebody's doing something cool, mm-hmm. but to do it as if it's like a shock and it's like you're doing something like crazy, the, like – you know, running into a, a, a burning orphanage to save children or something. Dude, I showed up for my kid's school thing. Some don't, like, though, That's my Some, job. But you know what, though? But it's your norm, but it's not always the norm. And that's how we get a bad rap in the first well, place. Well, I guess my thing, though, is is they start off with the expectation that, that the father's not going to be there. Right. So when they show up, it's like, oh, wow. To whereas I think that we all collectively should raise our expectations of fathers and understand the, 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 the importance that it plays mm-hmm. and expect it. You know, when, and you can ask her, she's right here. When my daughter comes home with good grades, I tell her, good job, but I don't blow it out of proportion because I expect it. Right. If she comes up with a bad grade, now we're going to have a problem. What happened? Because you didn't live up right. to your expectations. Well, I'll give you one that I think that people <coughs> probably react to you um, is, you know, what some people don't know about you, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, but that you do a lot of cooking. Yeah. You do a lot of nurturing in the household. Yeah. Um, so I think that is another thing that if you say that, Trinity, how do people respond to that? 
they're the always fact surprised. That you prepare dinner and you do yeah. that stuff. No, when we go places, people always like uh, not always, but a majority of the time, if that uh, you know the jokes that people make, oh, I bet you do. They're they're usually directed towards Angel and preparing food and stuff like that, and she's right, usually right, very right, quick. Right. And be like, no, he does a lot of the cooking right, as well. Right, right. And then their usually their usual response is surprise right. and envy. <laughs> right. Surprise in the sense that they can't believe it, and envy is, oh, I wish mine would do that. That right. kind of a thing. <clears throat> yeah, and, and in full disclosure, I'm not that guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, so unless you want burnt spicy food all the time, that's <laughs> I'm really good at doing burnt spicy. I thought food. you said you're good at breakfast though. Well, you can't really mess up breakfast that much. Yeah, I'm very surprised. good at breakfast. You'd be I'm surprised. very good at breakfast. Um, but, but that's out of necessity, bro. But no, I, I think <laughs> that's that um, I just think that, that it's important, though, that, that I know, at least anecdotally, and, and yeah. some of the stuff that we read scientifically, yeah. um, the father effect, it's an actual term that has been coined, yeah. and that is the, the umbrella, if you will, that kind of falls within the father effect. And now, the father effect isn't just positive. The father effect is negative as well. Right. Like we bring weight with us when we go into situations with our right. with our children, and so I think we all we're all fully aware of the negative, right? We're all aware. That's that's the stereotype. That's what we see all over the place. Is is she our got, she got daddy issues? Kind of yeah, yeah yeah. Like our our lack of involvement or our negative involvement has a ripple effect. Shh, big time. You know, my father had a ripple effect. My father being who he was and and all the things I saw and experienced as an early childhood as a result impacting me for the rest of my life right and that's all very well known everybody kind of knows that but so what we're going to focus our energy today on is the other side of that the positive right. father effect right. um and, and you know there's a there was a litany of things let me uh, i'm going to try to pull it up as i'm talking to you okay but there was a uh, let me see there was a a statement that was there was this article we read that addressed a lot of these different uh scientific res- uh, uh research things were done mm-hmm. <clears throat> it says having a good father figure can make an enormous difference in one's upbringing Children whose fathers are actively involved in their lives are less likely to drop out of school, break the law, have risky sex, be homeless, rely on welfare, be obese, have psychological problems, get into unhealthy relationships, and be unemployed. Now, granted, you you read that and you're like, oh, well, just need a father. Not necessarily. (laughs) They're just saying less likely, right? Other words, it it helps. It's a part of a a bigger puzzle. Right. Because I would assume a lot of those people, if they have a good father... They most likely have a good mother as well. Right. So I definitely think it's a team effort. Right. But the the father role is just as important as what I'm going to say. <clears throat> it, it is another in, it's another part of it. Like you can't have water without you know H and O. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't you take one of the out. It's not water anymore. Right. And so if you take the role of the father or the mother out, it's no longer that complete balance the way you have. Right. Once again, it doesn't mean it's bound to fail. It's just it's a little bit harder. You're stacking the odds against you. And so I think I'm... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, <coughs> now mind you, we don't have, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100 years of two-parent, and just calling it two-parent households. Right. We have time, experience, and research only based on male-female yes. type parenting. So uh, hopefully we're wrong Yeah. to some degree, Trinity. Hopefully Absolutely. we're wrong well, we have that a man is couples. important. Yeah, yeah, because I think in time... As time progresses and there's more same-sex couples that have children, we're going to have a lot more of them yeah. to kind of well, pull together I would argue, some more research. But for now, I think is what we're yeah. saying. This is what we have, so we have to go with this information now. Well, I would even right? argue what we'll end up finding out in the future mm-hmm. is it's not so much the sex, it's the role that they play. Yeah, And I, I agree think with that, that there's certain roles that it's just easier for a male to play than a female to play. Yeah. Not to say that we couldn't learn it, we couldn't figure it out, right. but I think that's what we're going to find as we progress is the gender isn't as important as the role. Well, the thing is, there's there are just gender differences. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, man. We've had, or I don't know if it's vice versa or not, but no, you said it right. Um, but that's a very real thing. Like I've read, I've read into that a lot, and like uh, one of the things, for instance, the, like there are very real differences between the sexes, and like mm-hmm. one of the things I read was uh, a lot of times for men, the way we recharge mm-hmm. is by sitting, mm-hmm. sitting and relaxing because mm-hmm. it helps our testosterone pool up, things of that nature. It's a very relaxing thing for us to whereas a lot of times with the females, that's not how they relax. Their relaxation was doing other things or being busy or whatever. And so that's a very real difference between the sexes. Right. Like, And that's the thing is it's so, it's so faux pas these days to talk about the differences, you know, we're, we're well, you're not equal. allowed. Yeah. Like, not, but there is some overlap. There's and definitely I, and, overlap. And I, and I think in that, <clears throat> that, point where there's where there's overlap where 
where you're just enough female and just enough male, where you're in that over. Yeah, those exist. Yeah. But you are the minority. In <laughs> yeah, the group you're that the we're exception, talking about. You're rule. the exception to the rule. And that's okay. I mean, we need those exceptions. And yeah, maybe one day sure. the overlap would be a little bit more. For sure. But for now, it is what it is. And, and there's not a problem with that. Yeah. No, not at you all. Know, um, it's okay. I mean, you're, you're, I was raised by a single mom, and I think I turned out relatively well. I mean, I think I, I went through my, my growing pains. Right. But also looking back, I think some of those growing pains could have been averted had I had a strong male figure in my life. A very strong female mom. A mom yeah. who worked <laughs> in the legal system. A she mom worked that worked in the, in the jail. prison <laughs> yeah. system. Yeah, so so that is a bad <laughs> Betty as well. Yes. So Yes, I, I, just, I knew not to cross her not very early that. on. So, you uh, know, if you're gonna if you're going to be considered a masculine, strong woman... Um, I think uh, her role itself in life qualifies. Yes, yes. Although she has feminine qualities as well. No, I'm. I'm, I'm what I'm saying is as the role itself. Like you don't. You yeah. don't say. Uh, I'm going to hire a, a person to be in a jail. You're not looking for. Uh, <laughs> you know, Private Benjamin. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. You're looking. <laughs> exactly. You're looking you for Wonder yourself. Woman. You just dated. Yourself, yeah, I know. By but the you're way. looking for a Wonder Woman. You know what I mean. You're looking for right. like a you know a tough person. But the, like the things that I've noticed though. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Private Benjamin. I love Private Benjamin. Yeah, Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn. Yeah. Um, but, but the things I've noticed with my own eyes, right, is yeah. is the different roles of what they bring is, is uh, uh, I know that in my own home, typically, you know, my wife is going to come from the more emotional nurturing route. Like her, right. her focus, typically, right. like her immediate focus, now she's capable of doing all, right. but her immediate focus is the emotional welfare of the kids. Right. If something happens, her immediate focus is emotional welfare. Right. How do they feel? Right. Are they okay? Are they concerned? Are they scared? Are they worried? That <laughs> I don't kind of give stuff. a damn. <laughs> you know, my and and my immediate focus is the situation. <laughs> my immediate sense. focus is: Are they safe? Yeah. Are they out of danger? You know, are 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 they? You know, uh, how do we progress yeah, from here? Clear the area. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, per- perfect example. Uh, my my daughter, my my nine year old, just hit her head um, uh, Wednesday of last week and right. ended up getting a concussion. Right. When it first happened. You know, my mom and, and, and Angel were both like, oh, poor baby. I was, I was like, I should be fine. Like, she's all right. She's bumped her head. Like, she's good. Right, right, right. Um, and, and so I wasn't really worried about her emotional well-being at that moment. I was more worried about, uh-oh, like, is she okay? Yeah. She didn't show any symptoms at first that she was wrong. So I was like, eh, whatever. Yeah. You, were, you were wrong, though. I was. Um, and my mom and, and Angel were tending to her emotional needs, which right. is fine. Um for me, things changed, though, once my daughter started getting kind of woozy, mm-hmm. um, and she started throwing up. That's when I was like, okay, we got to go. Um, and, and so, you know, we handled the situation. But that was my, scary. My point is, though, is I think that a lot of times with, with us as men, as fathers, we're coming the more, um, I hate to say it that way, but the more big picture route, I guess. We're trying to think long term. We're trying to think teaching moments. We're trying to think logically. Uh, to whereas a lot of times their immediate focus is emotional well-being and nurturing and compassion. Not to say that we're not capable of both, and I can't keep right. saying that because I'm sure <clears throat> somebody's going to hear this and get upset. Right. You know, I'm not saying that we don't. What I'm saying is our immediate thoughts. You know, my immediate thought is not the emotional well-being. My immediate thought is the situation and safety, and then I, I progress into okay, how are they feeling, and I try to handle it that way. But and, and <coughs> but that instinct is kind of to 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 present to shake it off. Kind yeah. of attitude is yeah. a very normal aspect. That doesn't yeah. make you a Cro Magnum male. No, no, you know. But but you kind of coming across with the you know. And sometimes we may verbalize you know shake it off or something right. because that's that's our instinct. Yeah. That doesn't make us bad people. No, we need both. We need the one that wants to oh poor baby, well, and, and that's why I say and we, we need, need the one roles. that says shake it off. Yes, because sometimes the poor baby is right, and sometimes the shake it off is right, but you don't know exactly. Um, <laughs> you don't well, know which and, one is going to be the right. Thing is is and by the way, it was two daughters that did it. Yeah. And children would be children is the same as some people are saying, oh, boys will be boys is a bad thing to say. No, kids are kids. Yeah. Kids will be kids is what you're really saying when boys will be boys. Yeah. Because kids will be kids and they'll play and get rough and get sure. hurt. That's what kids do. I um, But, yeah, so I, I think, though, that the role that a lot of times that the father is going to bring to the table right. is going to be the, the more logical approach, the analytical approach, the, the sometimes the, the tougher approach, if you will. Um, and I, and do I think that's always right? Absolutely not. Right. But I think that that is once again a piece to a bigger puzzle that right. we can't overlook. We can't downplay. Right. There is a reason why there's science out there that shows that when the fathers are involved, the kids are less likely to do right. these things. Yeah. There's a reason for that. Like let's not overlook it. And so, 
you know, and, and, the, and the thing, though, is there's a lot of single moms out there right now. They're probably saying, you know, listening to this saying, yeah, I wish, but my, you know, their father won't do that. And my answer to them is you're 100% right, but that role can be played by a stepdad. It can be played by a brother. It can be played by an uncle. It's that mentality, not the, the, the person themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, I have Skylar sitting right behind us, and technically, you know, by law, I'm her stepfather, but mm -hmm. I view her as my daughter. Like, that's my, that's my kid. Right on. And I treat her the same. And I have seen a, a um, I've seen the impact. Mm -hmm. When I first came into their lives, I saw her behavior and her thought process, and I've also seen it, you know, morph into what it is today. And I'd like to think that that's because now she has myself in the role, because prior to me, there wasn't that kind right. of a father. <clears throat> so, and more importantly than anything, uh, to, to be honest with you, because I get this in writing from my kids, is that you also exhibit how a man should treat a woman. Right. And so I think one, That's of, the coolest, a big deal one of the coolest things that I see when my kids write me like father, in the Father's Day cards or whatever right. is that they say, I show them how a man should treat a woman. So if I was doing something wrong, they sure wouldn't write that. Right. Like I was slapping Dana around. If I was acting <laughs> right. like a jerk off, you know, they know that I joke around a lot. I kid a lot. Sure. Very sarcastic. Um, you know, but Dana's my best friend. And what do you do with best friends? You joke around. You, sure. You, 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 of you, course. You mess around a little bit. But <clears throat> some people take it to, to another degree. They think because they're a man, they should act a certain yeah. way. And some yeah. women think because they're a woman, they should act a certain way. I think it's, I think it's the entrenched ideology um, that I do this because of my gender that creates problems with people. Right. I think that's where the single moms out there get offended right. is when someone says you cannot because. Right. Right. And so I think they overstretch of what they can do when in reality, look, man, I get it. The, the man's not in your life. You yeah. got to do your best, like your mom did. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's not knocking what you're doing. It's not. Right. It's not saying that you're not doing enough. It's just saying, wouldn't it be better if? But yeah, yeah you're doing the best job you can yeah. without. And, and and there's ways of doing it. And though. the exact opposite. <clears throat> yeah. You know, there's a lot of single dads out there. By the way, I Absolutely. mean, remember the rad dad? That that's how you got yeah. into rad dads and and yeah. Jeff. That you know, I met him up in Cleveland. Yeah. That you know, there's a good dad that was presenting good dads out there. Yeah. I was a single dad for years. And I remember you loved that because you yeah. were a single dad and and you and you liked the point that, that there was a person out there actually promoting good fathers. A matter of fact, yeah. here's another Trinity disclosure. Uh oh. What soap do you use, Trinity? Oh. <laughs> Come on, what funny. soap do you use? Um, I use Dove, actually, Dove for men. Why do you use Dove for men? Uh, well, first, uh, you know, I, I do enjoy the product, obviously, but yeah. I chose them because there are other products that do equally as good, I guess. Yeah. I chose them personally because <laughs> there was a Super Bowl ad a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, it was, a, it was like a small fad. It was a very, very small fad. There was like two or three different companies, and actually two of those companies I purchased from. <laughs> uh, you do, too, inadvertently. Um, I, I have Dove for Men as my deodorant. That's oh, my, nice. Yeah. Um, but it was Dove and Toyota. Yep. Dove, I, Dove I love Toyota. And, and we both have Dove and Toyota. Yep. Um, but mine's a very conscious decision, especially when it comes <laughs> to Dove. <laughs> for Dove, it's a conscious decision. But there was a, there was two commercials specifically. Right. So there's a Super Bowl ads. And you know how typically there's like a theme where a lot of the different, uh, 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 like all the, it's all, almost like all the marketers from all the different companies yeah, like they get all got together. together. Yeah. Like, this is what we're going to push this year. Right. Well, this year, there's like a few of them, apparently. Some of them didn't get the memo, but the ones that were at the meeting, they all decided they're going to push fatherhood. Yeah. And so, or Doug, bash fatherhood. Or bash. That was last year. Right guard, I think. It, no, no uh, Gillette. 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 Should I throw away my Gillette then? Because I kept it because I <laughs> like the product. Yeah, hey, teach their own, man. Right. Um, but no, so uh, it, it was Dove, and they were promoting fatherhood. Right. Uh, they were showing fathers and everything else, and they were showing, they were promoting Dove for men, of course, but they were going the angle of fathers. Good. Um, and then Toyota. Toyota had one where they had the father driving his kid to the to the airport, and there was a very emotional moment between them. And it was it was just a father and a kid. It wasn't you know the moms and the family. No, it was the father and the kid. And it was for me, it meant a lot that these companies decided to spend millions of dollars to put this image out there. Right. And I wanted to reward that by saying, you know what, you got my money now. Like I'm going to support you financially because yeah. I I like the fact that you took a stand and you approached that angle. Right. Um, and and <laughs> very quick right. note, actually, um, that's how my wife and I got together, to be honest with you. What? When she first, I don't think I ever told you that. No. <clears throat> when I first, first met her, um, one of the things that, that kind of made her stand out above the rest, um, when I first met, obviously, after yeah. I got to know her personality, things of that nature, but immediately. <laughs> you and your qualifiers. <laughs> I, hey, man, I've got to. Um, but immediately, one of the things that made her stand out yeah. was the way she approached me. A lot of the times at that period of my life, I got approached as the bad boy image was yeah. tattoos and things of that nature. Right. The approach she took was my kids. 
she actually submitted me to be on Rad Dads as one of the people that they promoted for being fatherhoods and stuff. And I, and it, I got accepted. And so I had to take a picture. I remember all that. Yeah, I had to take a picture. I took one of me holding my kids by their legs. Yeah, I remember. And I sent it in wherever there's a submission. Yeah. Um, but she's the one who facilitated that whole process. And that was when I first met her. Wait a minute. You, you Really? Yeah. I remember all of yeah, that. Yeah, that was her. And, and that's how I got into all that. And wow. so for me, that was like, that stood out. I was like, wow. wow. She came at me not for the bad boy or my looks or the tattoos or whatever. Mm. She came at me as like, dude, you're a really good father. She didn't come at you <laughs> for your money? No, I don't have any of that. So. <laughs> you're the you're the one percent here, not me, bro. Um, yeah, sure. Um, that's a lie, by the way. Yeah, whatever. Um, uh, but but, the, uh, but but so that's cool. So she yeah. she actually appreciated you for for who you were yeah. as a dad. Yeah. See, I love that. Yeah, me too. I love obviously. that because when, when <laughs> to get chosen, and I felt chosen as well by Dana that yeah. this is the guy that I want as a husband. Yeah. And I think when they when they choose you for those kinds of reasons, as for yeah. a father or for a husband, um, not because of the money you have or anything like that, but something about you, something about the way you act or something right. about the way they feel around you. Because that's what Dana always says. When she stood next to me, she just felt safe. Right. And she goes, then she knew. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's really cool. That's just more magical to me. I love you, that. No, I agree. Um, and so, and, and you said earlier, <clears throat> you, you said teaching the kids how to act. Right. Um, I'm very cognizant of that too like when i'm around my wife or even uh the kids because you know i have all the different you know i have two of each of yeah. male and female i'm very aware of how i interact with them all right because i'm aware of they're watching right you know they they watch a lot more than they listen oh my god and so i'm very aware with how i conduct myself and i'm very cognizant of i want them to make sure that they have a good example right. i don't want them to get into a relationship later on thinking and, and boy or girl yeah. You know, I don't want my, my son getting into a situation where he thinks it's okay for a woman to be mistreating him and, and talking down to him or not uh, respecting what he brings to the table. Um, but obviously, as a father, I'm also focused on my daughters, and I don't want my daughters to get into a relationship with a dude who's, like, slapping around or disrespecting them. Like, I don't want them to think that, oh, yeah, that's okay. Like, I've seen that. I'm used to that, so this is this is good. Right. No, I want them to see the opposite, so that way, the first time that little knucklehead wants to act up, <laughs> I want them to be like, "Wait a minute, this is unacceptable. Like, this is not cool," and 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 I do my part by by behaving that way at the house. Right, right. I try right. to anyway. Yeah, I screw up that sometimes too, but but luckily they're all like females that can tell me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, no, no, they, they have no problem telling me. You know, no. Here's one of the coolest uh, lessons I ever learned, if you, if you don't mind. Can I, can yeah, I go share? Yeah, for it, man. All right. There's a, here's one of the coolest lessons I ever learned. I used to... Is this the smacking part? Yeah. Yeah. I used to smack my wife on the bottom all the time. It was just a term of endearment. You know, you just walk by her, you just pop, you know, smack her on the butt, right? And my Zoe, which is my youngest daughter, was probably, I don't know, three to five, real young. And she... she Ask me to come into her office. <laughs> she knew dad was a counselor and had a, had a private practice office where I saw a client. So I went to her little office and sat down. And she sat me down and she goes, Daddy, why do you slap mom on the bottom? And I tell her, because I love her. It's just what I do. I love your mom. And that's my way of saying I love you. And she just looks at me straight forward and she goes, why don't you use your words? <laughs> From the mouth of babes, man, and I, and I had no, I had no comment because all she saw visually was, "Dad, that's violent. Why don't you just use your words?" And so, I from that day forward, right, in front of them, I've never slept her bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I walk by her all the time. I'm by, and I never even think about it anymore. Yeah. It's like she immediately, yeah, treated me or <clears throat> cured me of that of that thing. Yeah, well, I mean that's the thing, right? And, and that kind of transition though into the next major thing that uh, that we need to put across um and that is that it, it's more important uh not to just be present but to be active right, right? like for instance um you know at the moment i don't know if you guys can see <laughs> my, my nails are painted yeah um, like miami dolphins from here yeah they do uh I, I don't know why they chose these colors by the way ridiculous but, colors. Uh, regardless you know i i took i got a lot of both uh, receptions, right? Because I posted some of this on uh, on video. Because once again, my daughter had uh, a concussion, so the next day was a daddy daughter day. We just did whatever she wanted. Mm -hmm. She chose pedicures, so we went and got pedicures, um, and she wanted us to match. She wanted to have the same thing, so I told her, like, you know, paint my nails the oh, same she color. Got the same color? No, on the toenails. Oh. But when I got home, uh, my 14 year old back there felt left out and wanted to do it as well. So my 14 year old and my nine year old painted my hands. Oh, that's how that. Yeah, happened. that's how okay. it happened. 
Um, because I thought you went and did mani pedis. <laughs> no, no, I just did pedicures. Just pedis. Um, but my point being is, I've got I got both reactions, right? I got um, I got a lot, of course, of overwhelming. You know, that's awesome. You're a great dad. This, that, and the other. But then I also had some dudes that were like, uh, "You're better than me. I don't know. I do that." Blah blah blah. Mm. And my response was very, very simple. Like, "Hey, baby girl wants the nails done. Baby girl gets it. Like, that's my daughter. Like, wh- if there's anybody on this earth that that my ego is not going to come into the play is my daughter. Mm. Right, right, right. Like, whatever. Like, I have nails <laughs> painted. What does that mean? Like, right. does it mean uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, less than now or something? Like, really? Like, right. that's what you know. So for me, I think a lot of men, we do have to kind of put that to the side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're a beautiful big bear now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, my my point is though is and I think you've said it best back in the day is if you're really truly a badass, you don't yeah. have to tell people. Yeah. You just are. You just are. Because pain and nails are not. Do you think I can't walk into a room right now and still scare the shit you out of still, somebody? You still do. <laughs> yeah. Like, you still do. <laughs> so it's like, I don't, that's not going to make me less than. Except now they're afraid of not only you beating them up, but you know. <laughs> you never know what else comes next. Um, <laughs> so now they're really scared. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, but that's my point in, 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 is just be a dad. Like that's yeah. priorities. My priority yeah. isn't my ego. My priority is my children. I want them to be the best. In order to be the best, I have to give them my best. And, yeah. and, and that means I got to remove the ego. And so. And security, insecurity. You're actually yeah. showing them security. Be secure yeah. in who you are. Absolutely. You you are. You're not what you wear. You're not what yes. other people think of you because of what you're wearing. Or th- yeah. Again, you're exhibiting the tattoos don't make you who you are. The right. nails don't Trying. make you who you are. The beard doesn't make you who you are. But you are who you are. And I'm not afraid to, to yeah. walk around like this because you didn't remove it. No, I don't care. I mean, whatever. Yeah. To me, that's where you're better than me. I'm not. I'm probably not as secure enough to, to keep my to have my tails my toenails. Uh, <laughs> What's well, an easy story though? Everybody's like, oh yeah, my you know, yeah my yeah, yeah. No, I think it's great. I'm just um, you know you 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 know all it does is is it shows me some level of insecurity that I may still have because I right. wouldn't do it. Um, however, I got you on the pedicure. though. I did the pedicure. I gave you hell for I'll that back the in the day. Pedi- and I did I'll, it. Yeah, you did. Um, I love the pedicures, man. I love that. You but know, I, I, my I think um, the main thing though is is. I don't know, no shame for on my the, game there. For the fathers out there who who want to be, you know, the good father, or if yeah. you think you are, yeah. congratulations. Uh, the main thing, though, is is not just being present, right? Mm-hmm. I know that's said a lot. Just be present. Mm-hmm. And there is something to be said for that. Absolutely. That, that's to be the av- first step. To be present, yes, but you got to be available. You know, not just present. And there's a difference between being present and being available. And interactive. Yeah, and what I mean by, by available is... You know, I'm available to hang out with them. Yeah, I'm Archie Bunker was present. <laughs> yeah, I'm available emotionally. I'm available to talk to them. I'm I'm available to open up to them. I'm available to to be emotional and to be honest. Right. You know, to tell them my fears and my worries for them. Right. To tell them why I'm doing things. Mm-hmm. To answer the questions. To to open up to them. To to let them feel safe to express themselves to me without you know dropping the hammer or, or re- reacting to stuff. I try to respond to things. Um, you know, I go to the schools. It's very, very important to me. Every time my kids get an award, if possible, I do whatever I can to be there to show them you're Daddy on, supports you. You're on the board. Yeah, I was on the board of the kids' school. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, so, it, you know, it's not just being present. It's being involved mm-hmm. and active. Right. Um, and, you know, it, it's the – and think of it this way in, like, a spousal relationship. Would you want your spouse to be there or active? Like, you know, uh, uh, if my mm-hmm. wife was just – physically present but like she a, never like a lump of coal yeah but just <laughs> never spoke to me ever never showed me affection never you know had you know sex with me never did any of those things oh, boy. would i be cool with that no, no. but she'd be like, but i'm here like no mm-hmm. and same thing with your kids they don't want just they don't want you in the background as a painting that's always just mm-hmm. present no they want you active they want to play you know yeah um they want to do stuff with you and, and that's part of it like you're going to teach them lessons through your behavior through being available to them you know, like uh, uh, like mine back here, she can tell you uh, uh, she feels safe to talk to me about things because right. she can kind of already tell you how I'm going to respond to it. She knows that I'm going to be level-headed. She knows that I'm going to take my time. I'm going to listen to her. Now, she knows that she might not always agree with my assessment of the situation, right. but that's my role as a dad. I'm not supposed to be your friend. I'm supposed to be your dad, but I can do it with with respect of you as a person you know what i mean i can still love and respect you right. but give you sound advice and, and and consequences to your behavior um and, and i think that that's what we as a as a father can bring to the table and as mm-hmm. you pointed out and i think i'm gonna let you say it again because i think you said it best and that was you were you were talking about how we last forever kind of thing we don't die right uh, I go ahead and explain what you were saying earlier before we went on air <clears throat> well i'm just saying that you know i like to tell my daughters that that 
as a dad, I'm not going to die. I mean, physically, I'm going to die. But but really, I'm never going to die. You're always going to to remember what I would say in certain situations. You're going to be in life situations where you're going to think dad would say this or dad taught me this. It's just it, it's just one of those things that that it, it appears that fathers just have that that ability. I'm not saying mothers don't. I only focus on father because I am one. So sure. I don't even I, I don't even look or try to compare it to mothers because. That I think that's a whole different relationship. Sure. But as a father, that relationship, I know how I'm a very uh, father guy. Like me and my father were very close. So I just feel like that man is never going anywhere. That man will always be part of everything I do. Yeah. Everything I strive to do, everything I learn to do, everything I see. I see him everywhere. I feel like a father can be such an involved person and such an important person in your life that they'll be forever present. As long as, as, long as you remember um the way that man would speak to you or guide you you'll always have him and so i i just i just want to be that man i want to be that man that's that's forever used in time of need yeah no i i and i couldn't have said that any better you know and i agree you know i see i see movies i see tv shows and i see like uh uh, these people having these tremendous relationships with their fathers and later on in life and age or whatever um and i want that that's my goal you know um it's a traditional sense i didn't even have it at my own wedding but traditionally the man walks the daughter down the aisle and gives her you know i want to do that i want to do that as well i want to live long enough to do that i want the kind of relationship where they want me to do that you know like that's a big day for them and they're moving on with their lives and stuff i want to be important enough to them in their life that their thought is i want my dad to give me away you know i want them to still view me as that right and the only way that's going to happen is if I provide that kind of structure for them right. where I feel like something they want around. I don't want them to grow up and get as far away from me as they can because, you know, I upset them or whatever it may be. Right, right. Um, right I right. want them to, like, you know, that's my dad. You know, what's my dad think, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I used to always joke that, you know, um, that I attracted women with daddy issues. <laughs> me too. You know, but Dana didn't have daddy <laughs> issues, you know what I mean? And and I'd also joke that, you know, you know you did a good job if your daughter doesn't want to move 3,000 miles away. <laughs> right? Like, that was my fear. Like, yeah. if, my, if my kids grow up and they go, Dad, I'm going to move to California. <laughs> now, now, by the way, Jimmy, my brother, <laughs> I'm not saying you have you and your daughter have daddy issues because she's moving to California. Sure. I'm just saying. The reasons why me, she's moving to California Yeah, yeah, different. she has different reasons. But I'm just saying, for me, I, that was my measure. That right. if my daughter grew up and says, I'm moving to California, not because of school, just because. Yeah, just to get away from you. <laughs> I would say she's trying to get away from me. So I think the, the strong measure of good parents is that your kids want to experience life, but they don't want to go too far. Right. Just far enough where you can visit. Yeah. I, I, I just think that's a strong measure for me. Yeah. That's how I measured it. Yeah, yeah. And and for me, the other, the other barometer, I guess, would be as they age, uh, do they still turn to me for advice? For me, that's going to be a big one, I think, right. is because you're going to be surrounded by friends. You know, right. you're going to be surrounded by um, other people with like minds and interests, right. it, your, your confidants, if you will. Um, and, and for me, I know growing up, I could always go to my mom for mm-hmm. anything, mm-hmm. Um, and, and I did. But there was always a part of me that kind of wishes I had that dad, you know, the right. dad that I could go to for male issues right, or guy right, right. things or uh, male perspective on things. And so for me... My goal is to be that for them. Like right. I don't, I don't ever, 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 ever want them collectively uh, to not feel that they could come to me about something. Because mm. I don't want them to ever feel that either I'm not going to understand or I'm going to react in a way that they're not wanting. Right. Um, and and because to me, I think that's so important. <laughs> you know how I, I pass that message along <laughs> to my kids. <laughs> I like the I, I tell them all right. Well, traditionally, this is parenting traditionally. If you go chop somebody up in little pieces and eat them, <laughs> they'll put you in prison. The mom would still come and visit you in prison. The dad will say, I don't know what's wrong with that boy. He ain't my boy. And they'll, right? right. What I tell my kids is, I don't care if you chop people up in pieces and eat them, I will still come visit you in prison. Yeah, you're that's, still my kid. That's how close we are. Yeah. You're still my kid, man. You know, no matter I what. I might tell you you're an I idiot. I will always, I damn <laughs> I well tell you will, you're an idiot. I will tell you you're an idiot. <laughs> but, uh, but you're still my kid. But it's because my idea of that <laughs> is that everyone is allowed to act like an idiot sometimes. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, you're my kid. I love you. And I want to make sure you know that. Because no matter what happens, I will be there. And I think that is what's important. My youngest daughter likes to call me. 
her best friend. And I tell her, I'm not here to be your friend. As much as I try to dissuade this, I'm not here to be your friend. I'm glad you say that. I mean, it makes me feel it's awesome. Inside. But number one, it could be manipulative. Number two, that's not the role I want to play. But I think what you're saying is I get you and you know that I get you. Yeah. And good. Just yeah. so use that to use me whenever you really, really need me. Yeah, the, uh, and the way I think I portray that to my kids is, is you know, anytime they've they've tried to f- to lie about anything, yeah. I've kind of dropped the hammer a little bit. Right. But I remind them, like, you know, as long as you're honest, we can talk about it. Right. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you do. And I've tried to do that when they have come to me with right. something that, that is, you know, uh, against the rules or whatever. Right. As long as they're honest with me about it, right. my punishments or my consequences are always a little bit less than if they would have lied about it. Yeah, buddy. And, and my thing is always... I don't care what it is. We'll deal with it. We'll figure it out. We'll come up with a deal. Like we'll get through it. Mm-hmm. But if you lie to me, all bets are off. I can't deal with lies. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's my way of letting them know. Like I'm always going to be here, no matter what it is. And and I try not to shy away from certain topics and things mm-hmm. of that nature because it, it's life, dude. It's real. You know, they're going to have things that they want. They're curious about or they want to talk to. If they can't come to you, they're going to go to their friends or to the internet. Yeah, I don't want that. Because your friends are just as dumb as you are right now. Yeah, you can talk to me about it. And, and your internet is, you know, you're yeah. only going to look up what you want to look up. Yeah. So I want you to come to me. I'm going to give you the facts. Damn straight. I can't control what your decision is, but I can make sure you're informed. I can give you both right. sides of the equation and, and tell you which one I think you should do. Mm-hmm. And hopefully by that point, I've gone under enough respect in your eyes where you're going to follow my advice. Right. Because you know I, I'm coming from a place of love and, 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 and guidance. And I may not always be right, but I can assure you that my motives are pure. Exactly. Whereas I'm not always sure <clears throat> the motives of others. Exactly. Exactly. So Because I'm, I'm going to be wrong in my advice. <laughs> of course. It's going to happen. Yeah, of course. But that, 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 that doesn't mean that my motives are bad. My motives are always that you're, you're safe. And that you're going to be okay in the long run. That it's a non-life-threatening situation. Yeah. And there's too many of those. <laughs> there's a ton of those. And it can go wrong so And quickly. I'm not going to parent out of fear either. So I'm not no. going to say, oh, you know, I'm not going to try to baby-proof the world. I the can't. world is the world. Good luck with it. Exactly. exactly. And I'm here for you, though. <laughs> uh, man. Anyways, um, we're last, running out of time. Last four minutes. So um, yeah, I'm going to turn my mic off and uh, <clears throat> say goodbye to you. But before I leave the show, just so you know, uh, 26 years married. Tomorrow, right on me. Congratulations! And Dana. Happy anniversary, baby. Twenty six years married to that beautiful That's woman. Awesome, Thank you very man. much, Dana, for uh, choosing me as your husband. That now I'll turn awesome. my mic off. Congratulations, my friend. Right on. Um, yeah. So uh, um, today, I, I think was was a much needed show, just because uh, in the the environment we have these days, I don't think it's talked up talked about enough. Not to mention, we obviously just had Father's Day on Sunday. Um, so uh, I, I guess you know, at the end of the show. Um, we, you know, I will try to wrap up things and kind of give you an action plan, some tips to follow. Um, today's no different. Um, so today, uh, I'm speaking kind of to, to everybody. I'm speaking to the fathers out there. I'm speaking to the fathers to be, I'm speaking to the uncles. I'm speaking to the brothers, uh, and I'm speaking to the moms, you know, I'm speaking to everybody. You know, I think everybody can walk away with this advice. Um, so the number one, uh, for the tips, the number one is, is fathers are important. Um, don't convince yourself otherwise. Fathers are important. That role is very, very important in the development of a healthy, well-adjusted adult. Um, not to say that it's more important than a mother, but it is important. Um, and, and the second tip, or the second action plan, if you will, is is you also have to understand it's not about just being present. It's about being active. You know, you got to take the time to make them feel. You got to build that connection. And you can't build a connection by being a wallflower. You got to talk to them. You got to hang out with them. You got to do things with them. You got to do fun things with them. You got to take them out and introduce them to new hobbies and, and, and just create memories and create experiences. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to make those verbal uh, teaching lessons so much more impactful is when they have a memory to associate it with. They have this fondness of this person who loved them and took time out of their day. Oh, and by the way, they gave me some great advice. So I'm going to follow. Um, and then the third one is is the role is more important than the person. And, and that's where I meant about the brothers and the uncles and things of that nature. You know, if the father's not present or if the father is just, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're deceased or incarcerated uh, or they just chose to not be a part of things, which obviously it happens, um, anybody can come in and step in and play that role. You know, uh, I, Skyler is not my daughter by birth, but she's damn right my daughter. Don't get that twisted. Um, 
you know, there's there's other people even. She's got a friend. They're 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 my daughters as well. You know, I don't uh, they don't live with me, and I'm not responsible for decision making. But you you can rest assured that when I'm on the phone, or when I see her on the phone, and I talk to them. My first questions are, how are you doing? How's school? You know, I hold them accountable, talking to them, letting them know what's important. You know, it's my job to play that role, period. That's just who I am. Um, and so anybody can play that role. And, you know, this whole idea where I'm not the father, doesn't matter, man. Play it forward. Um, so I think that's I think that's all I got today, man. I think that's all I have. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure if you're watching this uh, on YouTube or something like that, subscribe. Uh, you can go to uh, youtube.com slash dharma time. You can look us both up on social media as at the Dharma guy and at the dope doctor. Um, and make sure to check out at WPSN 99 as well. Follow us, share us, tell people what we're doing. Um, our content is only as good as people to see it. So make sure you share it, tell people about us, and uh, help us grow a little bit. I think that's all we got. So now that you know better, do better. Peace. <laughs>